All right. Here we go. Here it comes. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, oh my God, yes. Welcome to Way Too Broad, a place for friends to talk about the things that they're really, really ridiculously excited about. I'm Hannah, and these are my co-hosts, Aaron and Ben. Hi, Aaron. Hey, Hannah. Great energy. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Hey, Hi, ben. Aaron and Could Hannah. Could use improvement. <laughs> the longer you make a word, the more energetic you sound, is what I've found. Yeah. <laughs> I liked your not Hannah. <laughs> like a fucking oh. Muppet. <laughs> oh me? Well me? what Hannah? <laughs> I don't know. Well, these are my co hosts. <laughs> I couldn't I list I must have listened back to our last episode to this one section on our last episode like five times just to hear Ben say raspberry funny and then to hear us immediately calling him out on it like so perfectly like Aaron starts to snicker and as soon as I realize she heard it too I'm like raspberry <laughs> that's what we do that's how we do raspberry <laughs> you just so sincerely said it yeah. I know and you know what it was because like I and I, if you know if you like listen to it, I that was like the only time I said it like that, mm-hmm. and it was because I said it once and then remembered there's a p in the word, and like as I was saying it the second time, I was like, "Do you say the p?" But like before I decided that you don't, I just did. <laughs> you have like a moment of self doubt. Yeah. Yeah. What's everybody drinking? An apple. <laughs> <laughs> You eating an apple in that mic made me want a big cup of an apple. <laughs> I'm having a cup of ice water. Cool. That was an auditory sound effect. <laughs> and <laughs> was that an apple? And this no, is that was ice water. <laughs> I'm having a I'm having a cup of grapes. <laughs> it's wine, and it's a it's a glass. Mm-hmm. Well, a glass, a glass of grapes. Oh. A cup. A glass is a cup. <laughs> I would argue a wine glass is a cup. I think it's under the umbrella. Yeah. It's under uh, the cup uh, umbrella. I kind of think all glasses are. Cups. Yeah. They're kind of God, an interchangeable remember, word. When I was a breakfast waiter, I had this grumpy old lady who I was waiting on once <laughs> who asked for a cup of something and I brought her like a glass and she was like, no, a cup. Was it soup? No, I don't. It was like a drink. And she wanted it in a mug. Oh, and she just oh. kept insisting that cup always meant mug. No, a mug and is a mug. Was dumb. A mug I was is like, there's also a reason. Yeah, there's a reason there's that other word That's for right. situations like this. Yes. <laughs> I would uh, agree that a mug could be called a cup. Sure. But. but, but a- it can't be assumed just when you say cup. No, 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 right. no not at all. But Absolutely. I'm still thinking about glasses of wine. Because if you say a cup of wine, I imagine immediately that you're drinking out of a non-traditional wine drinking. Okay, I will give you that. Implement. I will That's give you true. that. It's about specificity, I guess. Right. It's about It's about connotation. Yeah, yeah. It's about, you know, the deeper, the hidden meaning beyond the meaning. <laughs> It's about uh, reading between the lines. <laughs> right. Um, it's a mug drinking. of wine. You want to know what I... A mug of wine, yeah. <laughs> you want to know what I'm drinking? No. Yes. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, no, we don't. I just decided against you. <laughs> against you. you. I just decided against you. <laughs> what are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking... A nice, actually, I haven't opened it yet, but a nice grapefruit boobly. Boobly. We love, we love boobly now. It says, hey, you on the top of it. And then also this weekend, my parents 
who are also Ben's parents, came over <laughs> um, to help us finish planting our garden. Fun. And my dad brought um, a, a, a our own shandy shampler. Oh, Sean a shandy Connery. shampler. Yes. And so uh, he brought a shock top, mm. shock top shandy shampler. And uh, <laughs> I'm drinking one called Citrus Pearls. Ooh, how is it? It's pretty good. Dad and I were both saying that we think it, it reminds us of something. But we can't figure out what, so it's not a great story. Pearls of citrus. <laughs> I'm laughing at how bad of a story that is. <laughs> but once I get over that, I have to ask. <laughs> the shandies remind you or the citrus pearl remind you? Like the name? No, the like the shandies as a whole remind you of something that you cannot oh place, no the citrus, or the citrus pearl. pearl. So the it's flavor. even it's even worse because it's like <laughs> it's like this if you were like this word reminds me of something and I can't place it. We could be like, "Oh, is it this?" but I can't be like <laughs> guessing what your citrus pearl A that's a non-descriptive name. Like yeah. what does the pearl mean? Pearls don't taste like anything. I know. It's very confusing. Does it have like tapioca in it? <laughs> no, it's not like <laughs> it's not like bubble shandy. Is it like is it rose water? Is it like a fragrance, like perfume? No. No. Oh. Just let's just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> let's stop making this Uninteresting story. More uninteresting. <laughs> um, but it's good. You know, it's fine. That's lovely. What a nice uh, gardening uh, beverage. Yeah. It was funny because um, I texted my whole family and I was like, hey, if anyone wants to come help us garden this weekend, we'll we'll feed you. And I didn't um, get that text. Yeah. Ben got that text. No, I and didn't. Then... <laughs> I said oh, I did yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> I made that. She so. kicked you out of the family. <laughs> Actually, my phone is probably still broken. Yeah, it was. Let's we'll we'll get into that in a second. Let's but, go with that. So my my uh my mom texted back like, "Oh yeah, I could come help you on Sunday." And then my dad texted back, "I won't do any gardening, but I will come sit and drink and enc- uh, say encouraging things." <laughs> and okay. I was Fair like, enough. "Okay." And yeah, I was like, "Deal," right? So I'm like, "Okay, come over on Sunday." So then they came over and like dad did exactly what he said he was going to do. And (laughs) mom was like, I can't believe he didn't help us at all. And I was like, he never said that he was going to help us. (laughs) He he can't blame him. Met expectations. He did. Yeah. He he set set, them and met them. Yes. He set and met clear expectations. And that's all you can ask of a person. (laughs) That's all you can ask of a person. Did he drink? Yes. Yes. Did he sit and watch and say encouraging things? Yeah. Yes. And then he got cold and he went inside. But that was fine, too. Cold? Because um, he, had, he had met the requirements. Yeah, it was kind of chilly this weekend. So. Interesting. Um, well, it was kind of chilly on Sunday. But. Ben. Yar. Well, actually. First of all. <laughs> second of all. <laughs> <laughs> I have a follow up from uh shout outs to Rachel okay. that oh, she great. mentioned to me when we were talking this weekend. We were talking about the book that Aaron and I are planning on writing. Um <laughs> Things We Which Just one? Noticed Were Big. Oh yeah, that one. Things yeah, things you probably didn't notice were big. And But we did. <laughs> but we did. <laughs> by Her- by <laughs> Hannah and Aaron. Comma cousins. <laughs> Comma cousins. Esquire. <laughs> and um, Rachel, shout outs to Rachel, actually was like, I think that sounds like a really great children's book. I think you guys should write it. Oh, that does. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was like stunned. I was stunned. I, I had to mention it to you because I never once thought about it as a children's book. But she was like, I think it could be a really good children's book. Oh, that's a great idea. Shout outs to Rachel. Shout outs to Rachel for a great idea. Nobody steal it. So it might, <laughs> unless you're shout outs to Rachel, you could probably. That'd be fine. That'd be fine. Whatever. <laughs> so, Ben, tell tell us about your Didney? week. Yeah, yeah. Tell Didney. us about Disney. How was Disney? Disney? It was yeah. so good. It's the best place <laughs> in. It's It's. 
I was talking to my friend Alex about this the other day. It's amazing how Disney is Disney World is so great that it makes it bearable to be in the state of Florida. Wow, <laughs> big words. Yeah. And let me tell you, we had some mm-hmm. it's awful. Mm-hmm. But Disney's great. Preach. We went to Animal Kingdom the first day, which is my favorite of the four theme parks. What's What'd too hot, say, Animal Hannah? Kingdom? Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Animal Kingdom is the hottest park, and it sucks because it's too hot. Is it a zoo? Is it like a zoo? There's a safari. <laughs> oh, wow. Where they have real animals. But I, I don't like zoos, but I like Animal Kingdom a lot. Because it's like, they have really big open spaces, and it's like a wildlife preserve. It's yeah. not like a... Just like a look at these animals things. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, there's no animals in cages. You, They bring you to the animals. Yeah, exactly. Or oh, the animals cool. are fake. Sometimes. <laughs> oh. Sometimes. <laughs> they either bring you to the animals or the animals are fake. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll never bring you to fake animals. Oh. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So they have that going for them. <laughs> they may be hot, but they will never bring you to a fake animal. <laughs> they have this that. whole area of the park that's uh, called Pandora, based on the movie Avatar. Ooh. And there's this ride that's called Flight of Passage. In the Animal Kingdom? Yeah. And... I told you, sometimes they're fake, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are real. Real avatars. <laughs> real real banshees from Avatar. Um, it's like, this whole trip, I was amazed at how good 4D rides have gotten. Or whatever 40? they're called. You know, the, not, the ones where, like... 39? Or 41? <laughs> yeah, 40 rides. Exactly 40 rides have gotten. <laughs> These you know, like... 40 rides have gotten really good. <laughs> Maybe you know, next year they'll get 50. <laughs> you know rides were like... You're actually, like, stationary the whole time. They, like, move you up and down a little bit. But, like, most of the actual ride, quote-unquote, is, like, on a big screen and usually have 3D glasses on. And they, like, squirt water at your face yeah, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. The Flight of Passage is like that, and it is fucking incredible. Wow. Cool. It's simulating riding on the back of a banshee for, like, five minutes. Did you just light the goddamn podcast candle? What is yeah. this? <laughs> what is this? What was that? What were the last 15 minutes? What do you think that was? <laughs> All right, let's start over. Hello, and welcome <laughs> to Rachel. <Ray Tremont. laughs> Sorry, I'm Hannah. Can, can... <laughs> well, I'm Hannah. <laughs> uh, ben, that's really cool because I've always thought the best part of the Avatar franchise was the like the world itself. Yeah, like, the, it, the yeah. story is it's like, not man. good. Yeah, yeah, but they yeah, and they do a great job of like putting it on display there with all like the cool critters and stuff yeah. that you fly by. Are there plants where if you touch them they light up? On the ride? I don't know in the line or whatever. No, that would I don't be pretty so. great. That was my favorite part. No, but the line was they did. Disney's so good at lines, mm. which sounds weird, but, like, they are. They're mm-hmm. so good at logistics in general. I always forget about it, and then, like, and I'm, I'm amazed while I'm there. Like, the number of people that leave the park pretty much at once after, like, the nighttime shows, and how quickly we actually got to our car was, mm. like, remarkable. Wow. Especially after... And we went to Universal on the last day of the trip, and it's, like, the whole time... You can't, you just can't help but think that, like, Disney would have done that a little better. <laughs> like, ev- everything that goes on in the park. Even just, like, getting in, we were in, like, a random parking garage and the lines were terrible and security was, like, dumbly organized. <laughs> and it just was like, Disney would have made, Disney makes this all easy, or to do. Is that where Harry Potter is at Universal? Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, what are butter the other- beer. Butter what beer's are so the- good. What are the other, you said Animal Kingdom is one of... Th- Four? What are yeah. the other... Uh, Disney Hollywood Studios, which used to be MGM, Epcot, and Magic Kingdom. Cool. And my favorite, my favorites in order are Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios. Did you go on the Hulk? Yeah. 
It's twice. It's twice. It's twice. It's twice. <laughs> Once uh, on the first row, which was great. Yeah, the Hulk is amazing. Love that was it. probably other than Harry Potter World, that was probably like the best part of Universal. Harry Potter World's great. What are the other thirty eight rides you went on? <laughs> <laughs> Well, at Magic one. King and Animal Kingdom, <laughs> I went to, I did Expedition Everest, which is my favorite Disney roller coaster. Ah, cool. So you go backwards for part of it, Whoa. which is fun. Mm-hmm. Well, as you're sliding down Everest? Yeah. And do you like roller coasters? You know, I do, but I went, last time I went to the roller coasters, I... <laughs> <laughs> didn't find them as fun as I used to. Which roller coasters? Where did you go to the roller coasters? It's, it depends on the roller coaster. <laughs> I went to Bush Gardens. Oh, okay. Was and, it the wooden roller coaster? No. Those are good, aren't they? I did all of the roller coasters when I went to the roller coasters. <laughs> but I, you know, I think I, I blame it on, I blame it on being an adult and also the political climate, because <laughs> that feeling of like feeling stressed out and nervous about like when you're going up the roller coaster mm-hmm. was not enjoyable. Like it used to be enjoyable when I was young and carefree and it was novel, but now when that like gnawing in the pit of your stomach is ever present, <laughs> it's it's not fun to have it heightened and <laughs> and the. the the release part of it was not <laughs> adequate to to relieve it, so I just I, I don't know I don't know what changed, but your baseline moved. A yeah, bit. yeah. It's just it wasn't novel nor enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> I was like this feeling Thank of dread. Know. This is familiar. Um, <laughs> not having a good time. Uh. So. Have you been to Disney World, Aaron? No, never ever. <gasps> oh my goodness, Aaron, you have to go. Mm-hmm. Aaron, you simply must. I know. Maddie and Kate go every year. Oh yeah, we should take a family. We should take like a family trip. We've done that before with uh, with different branches. That of the sounds family. great. I'll yeah, go. Yeah, that'd be so fun. I want to go again so bad. I'm gonna live 20 minutes from Disneyland when I move to California. <laughs> I heard that to say I'm gonna live in Disney World. <laughs> We're not going to Disneyland. I know, but I'm going to get an annual pass, and I'm going to go a lot. Ben, that's cool. It's like half the price if you live in Southern California to get an annual pass. It's insane. Um, Hey, Ben, do you want to tell everybody what happened to your phone? What happened to your fucking phone, Ben? You know, it's actually a story very reminiscent to, I think, something that happened to you, Aaron, where you dropped your phone and tried to catch it with your foot and something went wrong. Oh, yeah, I've done that before, but it was, like, a flip phone, and those things are made out of, you yeah. know, Japanese steel, so. You, you ended up punting one of yours, right? <laughs> I did. Yeah, I dropped it, and then I kicked it, and it soared into the air, and then fell. but it was fine. <laughs> See, what happened with mine was I put my foot out, like, sideways to try and slow it down. It was All those right hacky after... sack skills came rushing back. <laughs> yeah. I actually did used to hacky sack a lot. <laughs> but it yeah, didn't that's help. why I fucking said that, Ben. <laughs> I uh, stuck my foot out. Instead of well, it did slow it down, but instead of you know falling nicely to the ground, it sort of wrapped around my foot, and then as my foot fell, I just ended up stomping <laughs> on it, <laughs> like face down into the ground. Oh no! Were you and in the Disney? screen was shattered. Yeah, I was an an- I was. It was the first day I was an animal. Oh kingdom. God! <laughs> it was the very first day of the trip. And were- like, and the Disney app is really good. It has like a map of the park, like a really detailed map with like wait times for all the rides. And I was the one that was kind of like bringing us around and stuff. And then my phone <laughs> broke. <laughs> no, you broke your phone. Yeah. <laughs> You're was... pulling out your phone to take a picture of one of the fake animals, and then you stomped it. <laughs> I stomped it. I think. I was trying to take a picture of a gorilla. Oh, oh. man. A real animal. Yeah, wow. Did I you then... say it was real. I just said it was you... a gorilla. Did you just dump your phone, like, in a trash can where you're like, well... No, because it actually yeah. still worked. Like, so the screen didn't work at all, and I couldn't touch the touch screen, but it could still, like, make calls and stuff. Like, I could feel okay. the vibrations of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I have a Pixel, so I could use, like, Google Assistant to call if I needed to and stuff. Cool. Yeah. Until I like, do stuff. 
I I have like an un I have an iPhone five not in a case. I've had it for like two and a half years. I drop it all the goddamn time, and it's I do too. Fine. I, dropped, I <laughs> dropped mine so many times, and this was just like it was just I a, was playing with feet too many times in a row. Well, you stepped on it, so that was That's really. True. That was really an extraordinary circumstance. <laughs> like you're a you're a you're a tall dude with with a big foot and a long leg. I feel like that's probably a ton of force going yeah. into. Yeah, it's a lot. My current phone has a big crack across the center of it from no impact whatsoever. <laughs> Literally, I sat down to do a marathon podcast recording of So Dreamy, and halfway through the third episode, I looked down and there was a crack through my phone screen. <laughs> That's I freaky. Know, yeah, it was a ghost. Are you in so, a dream right now? You know, I did have a lot of dreams about breaking my phone before that because I was paranoid about it, and then suddenly it happened, and I, I wondered, I wondered, mm. but I didn't. I wasn't. I, <laughs> I'm not. I am not. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't. I'm not. <laughs> I wasn't. I'm not. Hannah, uh, what? I have to ask you a question about our family Disney trips. Okay. Did we ever go to Epcot? The the big white ball? The big white ball. I think so. Because I went there on this trip, and I fucking loved it, and had no memory of it, like, as a kid. It's a place with all the different countries? Yeah. I think so. I, I, I had no memory of it, and it was so great. Honestly... I've never been great at um, distinguishing the parks, like mm-hmm. re- no- remembering which is which or knowing which one I'm in. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hannah doesn't know where she is most of the time. <laughs> Hannah, you're in Epcot right now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow. It was, yeah, it was a really great trip, and we so we ended like our we did three days of Disney parks, and. On the first day was the Animal Kingdom. We They have like a Rivers of Light show that they do. It's like this big light show with water on a, the river. It's really hard to describe. It's really great though. Is it a light show on the river? Is that- yeah, but they like do really cool stuff where like they shoot sprinklers out from like two sides of, a, of the like lake thing and then project like pictures onto them Ooh, and it like uh, it has a that. super cool effect where it's like wavy because it's water cool but like I don't know, it's it's really really cool and uh, the, it's just they're so good at that stuff i mean i think that we we could do that if we, if we wanted <laughs> this, this podcast could do that if we wanted to <laughs> we just don't want to so we want and then we did the epcot fireworks which were also really cool. They do it in like the middle of the lagoon in the the mm. world showcase. Is that like in at the beginning of every Disney movie? No, that's Magic Kingdom. Oh, okay. That's next because those were the best. <laughs> and here's the like it was cloudy that night. We could hardly see the fireworks themselves, but that was still the best show. Damn. Let me fucking tell you why. Because they do this new thing. It's it's new within like the past couple of years, I think. Because I do not remember it when I was a kid or when the last one went, which is like I think three, four or five years ago. They like project onto the castle itself, onto mm-hmm. like Cinderella's castle, and change completely how it looks several times during the show. Wow. Like project like stuff happening onto it that, during what? like the for like different uh, Disney movies and like during the Toy Story part. They made the castle look like it was like made of toys and was moving like what? to the music. It was Holy so shit. fucking cool. Wow. It was so cool. And they like the, the the transitions between all of them were amazing. There was a Moana part and they sang a Moana. How far I'll go. Make way, make way. It was great. Obviously. Uh Obviously. it was just you have to see it. Everyone in the world has to wow, see it. Oh, I really want to go. Do they do this stuff every night? Every night. Mm. I love that. Does it ever? <coughs> does it ever freak you out? Like how together Disney seems to have their shit. It, what, it, it freaks me bit. out a little bit. It's a, It's like when you're there, it's very easy to just sit back and enjoy it, and like yeah. not have to think about anything. But like, like afterwards, you're like. 
it was like too perfect and like yeah. if you're if you're really paying attention you can like see the people that are kind of stationed around the park that are like literally just like standing there with the things to pick trash up and dust pans yeah just to like get out immediately and pick up if there's any litter at all yeah and then like you see them and you think about wow i really haven't seen like any trash on the ground at all which yeah. is amazing with the number of people and kids here yeah just like little things like that and apparently there's like a behind the scenes tour you can do which my mom really wants to the next time she goes to disney world and uh, i guess a lot of the like stuff that the way the staff gets around the park is underground oh which is cool wow and Man, that's like that's why you don't see like trash carts going anywhere. Yeah. Which we actually saw a lot at Universal. It was like trash carts pushing through the crowds, kind of. Uh. Don't see it at Disney because it all happens underground. You're like Disney could have done it better. Just build underground tunnels, Universal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I really want to go now. It's so we good. Go. I'm. I'm telling you. Let's go. Universal does have like better rides and has Harry Potter World. They have better roller coasters. Yeah, they have better roller coasters, mm. but Disney has overall a much better experience. Okay, any other upfront stuff we got? I, ha- I have a quick upfront thing. Okay, I got a new jorb. What? Really? Wait, really? A jorb? Yeah. Oh, it's official and everything. I told all my people. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you want to tell us where you're going? Or what um, you're doing? Yeah, it's. I'm going to a place. The company itself is not a tech company. They're actually a company that, if you break your phone, for instance, <laughs> you Ooh. would or schedule a repair. There, there are like apparently now there are like vans that will come out to you like at your job and fix your phone while you're at work. Or yeah. like if you like have a like Dish Network dish and your dish breaks, you call Dish Network and you're like, please fix my satellite dish. They'll send a repair person out, and the people that they send for these jobs are actually technicians for this company, hmm. who are contract technicians. And so this a company exists all over the East Coast, and they use this internal tool to keep their business running, and so I'll be working on that internal tool. And I'll be uh, like a lead developer for like one of the sections of it. Cool. cool. Yeah. So it'll be a fun, new, exciting challenge for me. Congratulations. Thank you. What's your commute going to be like? Oh my gosh, so much longer. I'm going to have I'm going to have a very much podcast commute. Yay, oh, podcast really? buddy. Yeah, it's it's 45 minutes away with no traffic. But I'll be once I get up to speed, I'll be able to do like 2 days of work from home. That's good. But, That's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Awesome! Yay! Good job, Aaron. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks. We've been through so many changes together on this podcast. We're right? all, we're almost at a year. Yeah, and everybody's life is going to be so different. I know. <gasps> ben, by the time we get to a year, you'll be in California. Yeah. Wow. We'll be figuring out our recording schedule. Yeah, but for now, things are the same. So. <laughs> Should I go? Yeah, you go. Are you first? I'm first. I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear. Yeah, y'all, I did actual research for this. Wow. Oh, shit. Um, sort of. I mean, <laughs> you know, I took some notes. So, <laughs> way to downplay the thing you just immediately said. Like, discredit <laughs> yourself immediately. <laughs> so, here's my obsession. Ella Enchanted is... An excellent book, and it deserves another opportunity at being on screen. And I'm thinking miniseries. Ella Enchanted deserves a miniseries. And that's my obsession this week. <laughs> you, did you make an Ella wow. Enchanted miniseries? I didn't. <laughs> but Well, then what are we doing here? <laughs> we could if we wanted to. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to tell you guys about the book a little bit i'm gonna tell you guys about the movie a little bit did either of you have a chance to watch the movie i refuse because i love the book so much i don't want to ruin it. i'm very excited that you've read the book Aaron, i will i will instead do a reread of the book to refresh my memory in your honor well that's actually i want to talk specifically about 
the book and the movie and and why one is why the movie is such a bad version of the book great um so you can help me because you know the story i've i've listened to it i bought it um this week so that <laughs> like, i could have a copy pulled it out of thin air that was really funny <laughs> <laughs> it, like suddenly you were like your hand moved like completely sideways off screen and then it like came and <laughs> yeah I bought it this week. <laughs> like someone handed it. it to you. Like I your Oprah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I marked it with things that I want to read that I wish were in the movie because they would have been so cool to look at. Mm. And just like general, um, like small sections of examples of why it's such a great book. I want to talk about that. And I want to... Uh, so I tried to explain the plot to Ian yesterday and it ended up going on for so long so I don't think <laughs> that I could explain the whole plot but I kind of want to talk about like what the movie did that were like shortcuts that it's like I understand why they did them but here's why the book's version was way better so cool. that's why that's why I was thinking it would be good if if like at, at least one of you guys watched the movie just so that you knew what I was talking about but I I'll don't try think and- that I've seen the movie or read the book okay we can't just watch the movie, Hannah. <laughs> I mean, I gave you like two days, <laughs> but that's fine. What did you did you ask us to do that? Yeah, on the Slack, I did. Oh but, boy, did I not see that! <laughs> <laughs> but it was only a couple of days. I think I decided on Monday. So he can't just look at the Slack and read it and then watch the movie, <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> You're right. How how could I have been so stupid? So, okay. I want to I want to talk to you guys first just about like my history with with El Enchanted. And Aaron, maybe you're the one who recommended it to me cuz I don't know how I ended up reading it. I used to love I like we used to read and reread that book. It's entirely possibly I got it from you or you got it from me. Yeah, it's totally possible. I definitely did that too. My original copy, which I've lost, the last few pages were um almost uh like illegible because I, this is really embarrassing but you know it makes me cry every time i read it even this time listening to the audiobook it made me cry at the end and um i uh i would let my tears fall on the page on purpose <laughs> 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 but it made me cry every time I read it. And so eventually there were holes in the pages. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> You're just like mugging your book beneath your face and letting your tears uh, fall. Well, yeah, like laying in bed or whatever. But um, then, so then when the movie, the, so the movie of Ella Enchanted came out in 2004, um, which actually I don't know when the book came out. Let me see. It probably says in here. 97. So the book came out in 1997 and the movie came out in 2004. It was directed by one guy named Tommy O'Haver, O'Haver, which like, I'm just not, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get it, into it with him because I'm sure that he did his best and there were other Is he here today? As a guest? <laughs> <laughs> I hope if he were, she would have had his pronunciation on lock. <laughs> Right. And would have agreed to get it, get into it with him. Otherwise, there's no point in being here. <laughs> I'm so not going to was... get into it with him, but here he is. <laughs> <laughs> so it was written. It was written by uh, like five different screenwriters, and I there was an article that Gail Carson Levine, who's the writer, of, who the author of Ella Enchanted, the book. Um, wrote on her like blog about the movie because i guess like it was like 20 i did write this down she wrote a blog post in 2009 so five years after the movie came out and she said she likes the movie but she views it as a totally different entity from the book which is fair like i'm sure she made some money off of it she said that she had consulting rights um, so she could basically look at every draft of the script and give notes, but it was pretty much up to them whether they took the notes or not. Hmm. Um, and she also mentioned like kind of slyly, she was like, uh, 
that you know every time there was a new script which there was very frequently because there were several scripts and several screenwriters so i think that this like movie changed hands a bunch of times which shows very much in the Mm. film um and uh okay i don't know if you know this aaron but in the movie (sighs) in the movie there is an (laughs) evil uncle and a he has a talking snake which is not it's not even remotely not even remotely in the books and it made me so upset every time he was on screen especially because he was played by carrie elius there were some like really like decent actors in this movie who were just playing stupid shitty characters that happen to have the same names as characters in ellie enchanted oh no i feel like i can't man i really wish i'd done a reread of the book I think it's at my parents' house. I think I spied it last time I was there. Okay, well... I feel like it's been, it's been too long for me to comment. But okay. that sounds dumb. <laughs> it, there is no evil uncle in the book. And okay. In, in the book... Okay. So, <laughs> let's back up here. Ella Enchanted is a, uh, is a reimagining of the Cinderella story. Mm. Just in case anybody didn't know that. Ben, maybe you didn't know that. I did know that. Okay. Um, but instead... Even Ben knew that. <laughs> okay and i'm a dumb shit just trying to be helpful okay um and uh in this in the story ella enchanted um ella 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 ella, ella comma cinder she <laughs> she uh oh. <laughs> she has oh i never put that together you never put together what ella comma cinder oh really <laughs> you never put that together I know. It, it, right at the end, they call her Cinders. Like when the, when, the, oh. when she's trying to disguise her identity from the prince, um, they they're like, "That's just Cinders, the scullery maid." And I'm like, "Ha ha ha! You did it." Okay, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but the twist in this book, there's a lot of twists. But the but like the main difference between Ella and like Cinderella is that Ella is under a curse that makes her obedient. Well, it was a fairy gift mm-hmm. that was poorly thought out. So mm-hmm. there's this. There, so like in general, fairies are very careful about their gifts. They think about the consequences of what they do, and they won't do anything that they call big magic. But there's this one fairy, Lucinda, who is extremely irresponsible and stupid, and she goes around to like all these like births and weddings, um, giving people quote unquote gifts that are really awful, like. If they're feeling bad about their lives, she'll turn them into a squirrel because she believes squirrels live really happy, fun lives. Or she'll give. The, she went to a wedding this one time, and she gave the bride and groom the the gift of always being together, so they could never leave each other's side like ever again. Oh, which no. is, like, and one of the gifts she gives, especially to babies, is obedience. Um, you know, if they happen to be crying when they're born, like every fucking baby is, then she'll be like, I gave you the gift of obedience. And then she'll tell them to stop crying. And then she's like, you're welcome. And she just like disappears. Um, but then for the rest of their lives, if anyone gives them a direct order, they have to do it. And so Ella has this curse on her. But she's also this extremely strong willed, very three dimensional character who has many of her own skills and manages herself extremely well through a lot of difficult situations in the course of this book. And so the things that I love about it, like it's got I I was noticing some issues in terms of like age and stuff like she's like 15 or 16 through this whole book, Mm. which is a, a little bit young to be making like the types of life decisions that she's making towards the end of this book. But um, but she's she's living her life and there is a love interest who happens to be a prince but he's not like the center of her world by any means like he he's like pretty you know he's for the whole like first like third of the book he's he's not even like part of any of the major action she just like meets him a couple of times and he he's very charmed by her and and you know she kind of she she likes kind of the vibe of him or whatever but then she goes and lives her life and does her thing and like there's this one point where she's running away from boarding school or from finishing school and she gets caught up with some ogres and the thing about ogres in this world which i want to talk about world building too because uh she does a really great job with it but the thing about ogres in this world is that they are really good at sweet talking, like to a supernatural degree. Like they mm. can tell you they if they are if they, if if you can if they're in earshot 
and they're saying things to you in their like charming voice and in your language, you will immediately believe them and you kind of like fall under their spell. So they can just like talk people into like stopping from running away from them or whatever. And they eat people. They eat like any living thing, basically. So they're 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 bad news. Bears. <laughs> yeah. Ella is really skilled at mimicry. And so when she gets caught by the ogres, um, she's really good with languages and she's really good at mimicry. And she spent some time at finishing school studying ogres so she can understand what they're saying when they're not talking to her. She doesn't let on that she can. So she she's able to sort of like um, slyly sort of uh, figure out ways to not get eaten right away, basically. And then she uh, then she like starts thinking about like well like you know i'm going to die anyway i might as well try to mimic the way that they like do their like soothing voice thing and see what i can do and and so because she knows their language she does the the voice thing to them in their language and she manages to get them to stop from killing her and to go to sleep and then when they wake back up she manages to get them to agree to to like voluntarily be like tied up and arrested by the knights that show up. So like the knights can't defeat these ogres by themselves, but with the help of this girl who was traveling by herself in the woods, they're able to to like get these ogres tied up, like this big band of ogres, right? So cool. Yeah. And like so it's like yes, the prince does show up in this scene, but he shows up like to basically clean up what she's already pretty much finished. Like, she didn't actually yeah. need them to show up, you know? Right. Um, and she didn't need no man. No. And the, and he was very impressed with her, and they all were, you know? And, and, and he also doesn't insist that she come with them anywhere. Like, he... There, so there's this part where they're, like, deciding what to do next after they have the ogres tied up. And Prince... His name... Okay, this is stupid. But I would argue no stupider than Prince Charming. His name is Prince Charmont. They call him Char for short. That's charming in French. Yeah, but it's not spelled like that. But yes, agree. <laughs> Charmant. <laughs> um, Archante. So they call him Char. He, uh, they, they're like, look to him because he's leading the group of knights to ask what to what they're going to do next. And he's like, well, we'll send this knight to help Ella get where she's going because she doesn't have a horse or anything. And he doesn't even ask her where she's going. He doesn't need to. He doesn't like he totally respects her independence without even like knowing what's next. He's not like insisting that that she like stay with him or anything like that. He He's like he's like Ella's going somewhere. Let's 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 get her where she's going. So it's really great. Cool. Um, in the movie. All the jewelry and the all the all the the costumes are awful, awful, and the sets <laughs> awful. <laughs> I'm like, I'll give it a pass because it was 2004 mm-hmm. and everybody's clothes were awful. So <laughs> fine. And also, it doesn't seem like their special effects budget was huge, but the things that they do to destroy the world building that Gail Carson Levine did in this book are like pretty unforgivable Mm. like um so the elves um in the book the elves are really interesting they have one like set of woods that they live in their skin like changes color with the foliage so when she comes across Mm. them it's starting to turn orange because it's like getting to be fall yeah they have like kind of like waxy leafy feeling skin like they're very connected with the natural world they everything that they she spends one night like in their hospitality and um you learn a lot about their culture just from that one night like um she spends like they only really drink liquid things so so everything they have every course is like a soup of some kind they only drink liquid things <laughs> Sorry. much like us <laughs> they only... except ben who drinks an apple <laughs> right they only consume liquid things <laughs> i should say um, but uh or that they 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 prefer to go to sleep like uh, when the sun goes down like so they don't really stay up past dark a- mm. at all they sleep in hammocks like they you know you learn some things about their child uh rearing um and also there's this uh famous sculptor 
who is uh, an elf. And in general, elves are known for their sculpture, but this guy is like especially famous. And there are these amazing descriptions um, in a couple of different spots in the book of his sculptures. And I would have loved to see even an attempt at these sculptures. Are all of these... So is that... Were you reading that ogre scene? Because it's something that's not... Not reading. Were you talking to the ogre scene? Because it's something that's not in the movie? Or not done well in the movie? Oh, not... Yeah. So in the movie, she's completely damseled. 100% damseled. She comes across the ogres. The ogres are fucking ridiculous. They've got... um, They've got like... They've all got plumber's cracks. Permanent plumber's cracks. It's so stupid. And, And they... They capture her. They use her. They, there's no, like, none of this, like, charming talk stuff. They're just bigger and stronger than her, and they figure out her weakness, and she's about to be killed, and then Charmont shows up with his knights, and they save her. And, like... Gross. Yeah, and it happens, like, another time. And um, and at some point, he makes some joke about how, like, well, it'll be a lot easier for me to keep rescuing you if, if you stay nearby or something like that. Like, like, he's, like, joking about how he always has to rescue her. Gross. Um, yeah it, yeah it's stupid and also and like everything about it's just bad I, I made like a five page list of all the things that i hated while i was watching the movie why so, would you make us watch that why were you like oh you should watch this movie because <laughs> because it'd be, like if i have to explain what happened in the book and what happened in the movie for every single part then we'll be here all night so i just wanted to try to uh but that's fine um We'll be here all night. <laughs> there, there's, there's also some stuff. Uh, let me read you. Let me talk about the world building. So um, I'm going to read you. Let me talk about the world building. I'm going to read you the thing I was going to read you about the, the elf thing. So Agulin is the name of the sculptor um, that they're showing her, her the sculptures from. So, but my favorite was a stirrup cup molded in the shape of a wolf's head and shoulders with the head lifted and the mouth pulled into an O for a long howl. Ooh, sorry. The ridges in the pottery, uh, the ridges in the pottery for his fur were so fine that each hair was defined. I felt the tension in his shoulders where the cup ended and I imagined the rest of him sitting but erect with excitement running through him from his big paws to the end of his plumy tail. I loved his howl, which I could both hear and feel. Long and plaintive, will be gone and heart sore, filled with yearning for what used to be and for what would never come again. Beautiful. It's great. And like they didn't make any there's no mention of Agulin at all. What they did to the elves in the movie was um they made it so that the evil uncle, who didn't exist in the book, uh, had passed a law while Char was off at school not paying attention to politics, because his parents were also dead in the movie, which is not true in the books. That um uh elves could only be in entertainment and they all looked like what? like santa's elves they looked like they wore like dumb green like jingly things and what? they just were like kind of slightly smaller humans who looked like santa's elves except all in green and they you know they were all like always like singing and dancing and stuff um why did they even make this movie i know it's so fucking upsetting um also <sighs> Uh, yeah, I love the deep size before you actually. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the some things I understand, I understand that they were first of all Shrek had just come out recently. They were kind of trying to get that sort of like irreverent vibe, which is not the way the book is. It like it's not that it takes itself more seriously. like an irrelevant vibe. Oh, yeah. no. no. <laughs> but um, yes. <laughs> but uh you know there's some things that are very internal because this is written in first person so they were like it's really the scene where she breaks her curse at the end spoilers is very <gasps> internal it's all like an internal struggle that leads to like finding this inner strength she never had before that she f- finally is able to break the curse that would be really hard to translate to film but the way that they handled it makes me so angry that it's like hard to even talk about <laughs> The emo- <laughs> I can hear the emotion in your voice. <laughs> okay, so in the movie, in the fucking movie, Does she-, she fart. <laughs> I feel like she farts. No, he takes her. Char takes after learning nothing about her except they collide with each other a couple of times, and like she's the only female he's ever met who doesn't like scream and chase him like a beetle when she sees him in the movie. Um. Char decides he's going to propose to Ella 
So he takes her into this place called the Hall of Mirrors in the palace, and it's full of mirrors, except the mirrors even suck. The mirrors, like, don't aren't giving true <laughs> reflections. But, but again, like, budget, like, fine. But <laughs> Even the mirrors <laughs> suck. Mirrors aren't that expensive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so they're in the Hall of Mirrors, and she's gotten... Um, she has gotten secretly an order from the evil uncle that she has to stab Char when he proposes to her. And so, like, he, sh- she's hugging him because he just proposed. And she's looking at herself in the mirror, holding the dagger behind his back, and her hand is shaking and stuff. And then she looks at herself in a mirror and she says, you will no longer be obedient. And then she drops the dagger. <laughs> like all she had to do the whole time was look in a mirror and order herself not to be obedient anymore. <laughs> like <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. Like, like she wouldn't have tried that. Yes, uh, yes, I right. And like also, that it's so deeply inconsistent with the way it handles the curse. Like sometimes this one time, somebody tells her to hold her tongue, and she physically like holds her tongue, which honestly is kind of more in the spirit of how the curse works in the book but then this other time um char says kiss me and she's and he's like that wasn't an order and she's like i, I know and like like her body like you can tell when the curse happens in the movie because it, like her body reacts and you can tell that it didn't react to that as if the curse knew well this order was not an order this was like because it's so romantic like no like Fuck you. If if you can't understand that hold your tongue is an expression, how did you figure out that the actual words kiss me were not in order? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's about the intent of the person who said it. Don't defend this shit, Ben. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. No, because I'm pretty sure that the person who said hold your tongue didn't mean for her to actually hold her tongue either. Um, so I have been going on for a long time, so I'm going to leave it at that. But here's what I'll say. The book is a really, really quick read. I think that everybody... Sh- oh, and it's on Audible. The narrator's voice is very high-pitched, but you do get used to it. Um, <laughs> and uh, and it's really... It's worthwhile um, because it's... it's 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 a fairy tale that kind of redeems the idea of fairy tales. Like it, it holds to a lot of the tropes while still being like very complete and and interesting. And there's also it would make a really great miniseries because there's this part in the middle where you could even say that there's a little bit of like maybe like some bisexual romance thing happening, just like oh. a little tinge of it. Oh, that reminds me. Can I interject <laughs> about Disney for one second? Yeah. I will say the one thing that I didn't love about being at Disney was being reminded how like remarkably heteronormative mm. every single mm. Disney movie is, even like the newer, more progressive ones. Like Moana doesn't have a love interest at all, which is like a good step. Yeah, yeah. And even like during that amazing show, Song of Magic Kingdom, like they basically focused on the newer movies and the newer princesses that are like a little more independent. Like uh, Merida, I think is the name of the one from Brave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And There's like, no love Rapunzel. interest in that, which I liked. Yeah, and Rapunzel and Tangled, who, like, has a love interest, but she's a very, like, full character. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's nice that they're, like, moving in that direction, but I kind of wish they'd, like, step up to the plate a little bit as the role they have in our society of being, mm-hmm. like, such a huge culture influence, yes. especially for children. Yes. Because, like, and I was, I was actually, I was with, I was there with, um, our friends Jonathan and Kyle, who are a gay couple mm. that we went to Japan with also. And we were talking about how, like, as a kid, the first time you're exposed, for a lot of people, at least for me, like, or not especially, but for me and for a lot of kids, I think the first time you're exposed to even, like, the word gay mm. is as an insult. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, yep. all the time. And, like, that, it'd be nice if instead the first time you're exposed is as, like, just a normal gay couple in a Disney movie. Yeah. 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 Yep. You know? There was a gay character in Frozen, but it was so subtle, it would just be so hard to pick who? up on it. The, the, who? Who the was sh- gay in Frozen? The oh, shopkeeper. The guy. shopkeeper. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, he, the guy, he, he was like in the hot tub with his family, like his husband and his kids. Oh. oh. Yeah. But it was like really, really subtle. Yeah. Yeah, they need like a, a gay Disney prince couple they need, or princess yeah. couple. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I, I, I I know that I've gone on a long time and I this will be the last thing that I read. But on that note, I would like to read you just one more page of the text, which is the part that I think you could turn into a full blown like 
Ella is bisexual sort of storyline. And not that it's supposed to be there, but I truly, truly, I remember, Aaron, maybe this will bring a bell for you too, but I truly, as a, as a young bisexual preteen, I remember hearing this part and thinking, and, and like, thinking like, this feels romantic. Like, this just feels like a romantic scene. Like, and, and I still feel that way listening to it today slash reading it. So it's very quick. Do you guys mind? Yeah, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Okay. So just to set the scene, uh, she has, she is like a best friend at, at boarding school before she runs away. Um, and her name's Arita and, uh, they're sitting like in a garden and she's just told Arita about how her mother died. And so she's sung her this morning song, um, that from her culture, cause they're from two different countries. Um, so, and in her, in Arita's country, singing is really important. So. Arita's voice was as smooth as syrup and as rich as gnome's gold. I cried, steady tears like rain, and like rain they brought ease. You have a beautiful voice, I said when I could speak. We Aeorthans are all singers, but singing mistress says my voice is too husky. Hers is thin as a string, and yours is perfect. A bell rang in the house, calling us in to prepare for bed. Is my nose red from crying, I asked. A little. I don't want the others to see. I'll stay out a while longer. Manners mistress will be angry. I shrugged. She'll only tell me I've disgraced the king. That's the thing she always says. Um, I'll stay with you. I can watch your nose and tell you when it's not red anymore. Pay attention. Don't let your eyes wander. I wrinkled the feature. Arita giggled. I won't. Manners mistress will, will ask what we're doing out here. I was laughing too. I'll tell her I was watching your nose. And I'll tell her I'm wrinkling it. She'll want to know what the king would think of our behavior. I'll tell her the queen watches every night while he wrinkles his nose seven times. <laughs> <laughs> the bell rang again. Your nose isn't red now, Arita said. We ran for the house and met Manor's mistress at the door, on her way on her way to search for us. The sight of her set us off again. Young ladies, go to your room. What would the king say? So that's funny, because they said she would say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was flirty. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I really, truly, I remember thinking, like, God, this is so sweet. And then the whole reason she runs away from boarding school is because her evil stepsister orders her to stop being friends with this person. So Aww. rather than uh, actually, like, stop talking to her and still be around her, which would be too painful for both of them, she runs away to try to break her curse instead. Aww. Yeah. That's, that's sweet. sweet. That's yeah. sweet. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. So it's a good book. And they should make a mini series out of it, and it would be really good. And people you would should like make it. it. Yeah, let's make it. Go to go to film school and just when people are like, "What motivates you?" You're like, "I'm just here to make an Ella Enchanted mini series and then get out." <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's mine. I'm very sorry. I, that's a great obsession. <laughs> Thank you. It's a great book. Everybody should read it. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to pick it up from my parents' house this weekend. And, Do it. And, and read it. Do it. It's great. You'll cry. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll I make think... sure to cry on the book. <laughs> yeah. It's for proof. Erin, <laughs> um, you're next. I'm next. I'm also excited about my obsession. It will be short. I'm sorry. No worries. No. Stop apologizing. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I said so boring. Um my obsession has been beautiful here. It's been just gorgeous spring weather, light on the skin, be- beautiful. And I have been obsessed with grilling this week. Grilling. Oh, nice. So I I was thinking about this. I was like, I like to cook. And I was like, I feel like Saying that is a misrepresentation because when you think of somebody who says, I like to cook, they're usually people who like to do like super fancy recipes or like try fancy techniques or like do fancy things. (laughs) And I don't think that's true of me. Like I would certainly like love to take a cooking class and I like to try new recipes every once in a while. I think it's more accurate to say that I really like to make dinner. <laughs> I really enjoy I really enjoy coming home from work and like having a nice cooking project and like making something and sometimes it's something new 
and sometimes I really like like revisiting old things or just like making dinner. Nothing fancy. Just like I love to make dinner and mm-hmm. I like to I really love to grill. Mm-hmm. And so um like maybe four or more years ago, Molly bought me um maybe it was more maybe it was almost five years ago. Molly bought me a beautiful blue Weber charcoal grill that I've been using ever since. And it's absolutely gorgeous, and I just love making things in it. So I I grew up with my mom. I think I like my mom had has always been an adventurous cook and like cooked dinner every night. Always something like really nice, you know. Um, and what are you doing, Hannah? It's so distracting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm really hot. I was okay, just opening the window. That's because bit. you bundle the fuck up. I know for for. Anyway, so my, so every night, like, we always, when I grew up, like, we always did family dinner. We always, like, sat at the table and ate together. And it was, my mom always cooked, and it was always, like, a really nice meal. And she often, my mom really likes to do new recipes. And so I kind of grew up in this household. So I think part of my, like, liking to cook dinner is mostly liking to eat a nice dinner Mm -hmm. and that can so it kind of follows that then i also enjoy the whole process of like meal planning and grocery shopping and then preparing food Mm. but my dad was always a big griller and always grill had a charcoal grill and always would grill and so i've kind of become like i like to do both things and so this especially this weather it started we had saturday we had some people over and i was like i'm gonna grill steaks it's gonna be so nice out so i grilled steaks and then sunday my mom and sister came over and i was like oh it's so nice out i think i'll grill (laughs) grilled chicken and then monday i was so nice out you guys (laughs) and i was like well i have salmon so i grilled salmon and then yesterday (laughs) Oh my gosh, you guys would not believe how nice it was outside. <laughs> and I had chicken wings, and so I was like, well, this will be fun. So it just has been just, like, irresistible to me this week, both the weather. Like, it's just so nice to come home, and, like, I love my back deck, and my backyard is beautiful, and the temperature's perfect, and it's still light out, and I'm just, like, grilling is a great excuse to, like, stay outside and you know, have a couple hours just outside doing a project. Mm -hmm. And then the food's so tasty. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's so good. And and I I have really been enjoying, like, trying different things and, like, getting my techniques down. And I have some friends who like to grill and, like, talking Mm -hmm. to them about, like, sharing, you know, oh, what did you do for this? Or talking to my dad about it. Mm -hmm. And yesterday... Yeah, um, all the day, grilling days are running together, but it was definitely yesterday. <laughs> I'll like be sitting out there, watching the coals with my beer. Henry will be like running around mm-hmm. the backyard. There was a big commotion, and we look up. Molly was on the screen and porch. We both happened to see this. He was chasing a hawk. Oh. Like he, like I look up. He's running after this huge fucking hawk. <laughs> Like, right on its tail, who's, like, Whoa. slowly ascending, like, could have been going a little faster. <laughs> and Henry's, like, right on its tail. Oh, my god! Like, I was, like, worried for a second he that's was going to so cool. catch it. It was so neat. It was very majestic. But I'm also, like, that's how you fuck your face up forever, yeah. is by trying to catch a hawk. <laughs> Accurate. But anyway, so this is, uh, this string of four days in a row is, was not the first of, I'm kind of a year-round griller, really, <laughs> but... This weather has been um, just irresistible to me this week. I've been absolutely obsessed with with grilling. Ian's dad is a huge griller. Loves oh, to yeah? grill. Yeah. Mm. Such a dad thing. Such a dad. I'm kind of a dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just really love to grill. <laughs> That's legit. It's so enjoyable. Have you ever made pizzas on the grill? Huh? Have you ever made pizzas on the grill? No, I haven't. Our dad used to do that all the time during the summer. Dad's. Mm-hmm. At like any outdoor 
event we were having at our house. That's cool. It's really good. Molly doesn't eat cheese or dairy. She can't eat cheese or dairy. You can make good za without cheese. That's true. I don't think that's true. You should ask Lucas. Listen, that actually is relevant to my obsession. Oh, sweet. I'm kind of done. (laughs) Cool. Quick one. Well, I want to tell you that I'm very happy for you. (laughs) I absolutely can't relate to the feeling of getting home and wanting to cook (laughs) at all. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but i yeah. totally believe you and i'm happy for you i think it's just you know i i had a, a realization that i think it's just a hobby especially on the weekends like it's a joy for me on the weekend to like have my family over and like prepare a big meal mm. you know just like mm-hmm. oh, it's just so joyful i don't know no that's great. i think it's because it's a hobby i think it's an interest it's a hobby life. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I realized you I was like why am I, an obsession. I was like, why am I doing this? I was like, oh, because I because I really like to do it. I think I think I, I was like, I think this is a hobby. <laughs> this is what a hobby is. Is this a hobby? I was trying to do it. Is this a hobby, you guys? <laughs> so maybe my pro- I, if you listen back to the first episode, I think it was the first episode or the or the second that was my whole thing about you being insecure about not having any hobbies. But I think through the course of this podcast, I realized it wasn't that I didn't have any. It was that I'm just like bad at recognizing them. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not a hobby. It's just something that I do. Yeah. Consistently. Yeah. Right. Right. That's true. <laughs> I, I get that. I do relate to that. Whatever people, whatever anybody's like, what do you like to do? I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I guess I do it. <laughs> I guess, like, because the thought of, like, coming home and, like, some people are like, oh, I just have cereal for dinner. That is so depressing for me. <laughs> I feel so sad and sorrowful. Like, I would feel so sad and, like, just depressed <laughs> if I came home and had cereal for dinner. You know? But that's I just. I cereal for dinner tonight. <laughs> Ben? No, I'm kidding. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Especially I had when I'm alone. I like to cook a big Japanese meal. fried rice from mm. Trader Joe's. That it's so great. good. It has edamame and carrots and little tofu things in it. Did you like fry it up in a pan? Yeah. There you go. Bingo. I mean, I did, it was a, it was a frozen <laughs> a thing bingo. in a bag, but I still made it in a pan. That's a so. bingo. <laughs> that's a bingo. But that's a cook. <laughs> that's a that's cook. That's a cook. <laughs> I did a cook. That's a cook. That's bingo. a cook. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a cook. <laughs> um, Ian really likes Ian's more like you, Aaron, um, which is great for me since I'm like yeah. me. Um, <laughs> Someone like you. I will. I won't mention this too much because this will very, very likely be an obsession later this summer. But I also really enjoy smoking things on the grill, and I might have mentioned in the past. But I've, I like to do pork shoulders, which take. An extraordinary amount of time. Like once, my longest one was like twenty-one hours that I did. I think I did mention that on this pod. Wow. Um. So, do you ever make bread anymore? Yeah, I'm actually gonna make bread. I haven't in a long time, but I'm gonna make bread this weekend, and I don't remember why. (laughs) (laughs) Just because it's a hobby, right? Yeah, because it's a hobby. Well, I've been wanting to. It's just been a little crazy. Uh, how I've been forgetting. But you know, you know what it is is that we're gonna do. We have a bunch of canned tomatoes that Molly canned last year that are amazing and delicious. But we need to use them up, and so I've declared a soup every week. No, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a soup every week <laughs> month. Okay, and so I'm gonna make bread, and then we're gonna have soup. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Great job, Aaron. Thanks. Grill. <laughs> Grill. <laughs> Grill. Ben. What you got? Okay, I'm cheating this week. And that I'm kind of doubling down by having a broad obsession. What? I will like, explain. Like an obsession about broads? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Broads, man. Kylie's My been obsession... gone for like one day, man. <laughs> <laughs> My obsession is food shows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But two specifically. Okay. 
and one led me to the other. That's why I'm like doubling them up. Mm, okay. But I also, like, I just really want to talk about both of them. The first one's called Worth It. Have you ever heard of it? No. Mm. It's a YouTube show that's produced by BuzzFeed, which doesn't sound like something I'd like just off the bat, but uh, it's these two guys in LA at the LA BuzzFeed office who try like a kind of food at three different price points, like at the $1 sign, $2 sign, and $3 signs, and determine and, and, and decide which one they think is the most worth it for its given price. Hmm. Interesting. Cool. And it's really fun. They've done like, and sometimes the, the stuff gets really expensive. Like I think the most expensive thing they've done is $2,500 something. Whoa. They had like a, a $2,000 pizza. No. Whoa, baby. That was like, had like squid ink dough and had truffles all over it. <laughs> A lot of the really expensive stuff just either has truffles or gold leaf or both yeah, on it. Yeah, do they have those gold chicken leaf? leaves? I don't... I, I haven't... They might have. I don't know if they have yet. But why do, would you eat gold? You just poop just, it? It's like, it's like exactly. part of the experience of having something real fancy, I guess. <sighs> like they, a tr- they, I, I almost want them, like, when they're at one of these fancy places talking to chefs, to, like, ask them... Why the gold? Yeah. Like, why you put just it like poop it? You're like just truffles, pooping. sure. Like truffles are are expensive, oh, they're but they're delicious. Yeah. But gold, you're just you're just eating money. It's like yeah. wiping your butt with a dollar. Yeah. Well, yeah. or more dollars, like a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I don't get. I like that's just dumb and wasteful. I've and never stupid. understood it. It's so stupid. It's... But that's and that but and that's not what all of it is. Like sometimes it's just like. Like, they did one about steaks, and it was just, like, a really mm. nice, expensive cut of, like, nice. Wagyu beef. Yeah. And I think that ended up being one of their winners for Most Worth It, even yeah. though it was, like, a few hundred dollars. Can I tell it, just to insert a quick anecdote here, mm-hmm. is is that Molly and I went to one of our favorite restaurants in Durham, like, it's one of the, like, the, the, the fancy, like, celebrate something mm-hmm. restaurants, and it's a tapas place, and so we ordered... You know, there's a ton of stuff on the menu, and they're all kind of vague, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You have, like, no idea what your food's going to look like. And the we had never heard of Wagyu before. So the title was Wagyu, and the description was mushrooms, you know, shallots, and something else or whatever. And so we ordered that, oh, and God. it's so delicious. And we're eating it. It's really it. expensive, though, right? Well, it wasn't, you know, it was a really small portion. Mm. Okay, it was yeah. a super small portion, but we're eating it, and... And uh, Molly is like, is this meat? And I was like, no, it's mushrooms. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> and we were like, these are the most delicious <laughs> mushrooms. And we kept going back and forth because she's like, I think this is meat. And I was like, no, it's mushrooms. And we were like, it's so good. And then like I was starting to become suspicious that it might be meat. And Molly was then convinced that it was mushrooms. And then we eventually Googled it and we were like, no, it's actually really expensive meat. Because it, really it was sliced very thinly. So anyway. <laughs> so I was watching an episode of Worth It where they went to Korea and did Korean barbecue <sighs> for like the thing that was worth it or not. And they did the first two places they ate at. They ate with this like celebrity chef guy named David Chang. Oh yeah. Who, you know him? Mm-hmm, Cause that other show yeah. you're probably going to talk about. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm going with yeah. this is, uh, and I looked him up after cause I, he was like entertaining yeah. on that episode. Uh, and he has a show on Netflix with a food writer, named Peter Meehan, called Ugly Delicious. Oh, no. Oh, that's not what you were going to talk about? (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I think he has an episode or two of another cooking show, which is probably how he ended up having Ugly Delicious, because I remember, I can't remember what it was called. I was hoping you'd remind me. But um, he... uh, I remember not caring about most of the other episodes besides his, because he was so Hmm. fun. Yeah, he's really he's really cool, and it's it, ugly delicious. the The format of the show is kind of hard to pin down. It's basically like they kind of pick a food for that episode, mm-hmm. and then like talk to 
a bunch of people about like the history of that food about mm. like kind of new things that have been done in the culinary world with that food uh like different takes different chefs have like the first episode is about pizza mm. and they talk to like one of the some of the most famous pizzerias in america and then they talk to like and like what they think of what a what a pizza is mm. and like what a pizza isn't mm. And then they, like, go to Naples and talk to the guy who, like, is the head of the Neapolitan Pizza Association or whatever, who, like, gives certificates for real Neapolitan pizza. (laughs) Nipples. And And they, like, talk to, like, Wolfgang Puck, who makes this crazy pizza with, like, caviar on it, about how, like, and and no one, everyone shouldn't be as snobby about what pizza exactly is. And it's just, like, this whole array of opinions about various foods Mm. and they they have a really interesting episode about shrimp and crawfish Hmm. and about specifically like how there's this style of food that's arisen pretty much only in houston called viet cajun Hmm. which is like a combination of vietnamese and cajun food but but there's like a similarly large vietnamese population in new orleans where they also eat a lot of cajun crawfish but just because of the culture there, it hasn't caught on. Like, Viet Cajun hasn't happened, and all the people who, like, could be doing it. Like, he goes to a restaurant where it's literally a Vietnamese family whose, uh, like, family immigrated there during after the Vietnam War as refugees and then started a crawfish and Vietnamese restaurant. Yeah. And they only cook the crawfish, like, the classical Cajun style, and then they're also, like, making pho. Huh. Like wow. literally, like would be the place that it would happen, but they refuse to do it. They would like never cook it the the other way. Wow, wow! It's so it's so interesting, and they they go into like the history of Vietnamese shrimpers as refugees coming to to the Gulf area, and like I, there's this whole thing I didn't know about where like the Ku Klux Klan was hired by like shrimping associations to scare off and or, and like burn boats of Vietnamese shrimpers because the uh locals thought they were like stealing all of their business jesus yeah it's it's wild and there's a there's an episode of fried chicken where david chang is talking about mentions how like he had he was doing like some show with a, a friend of whose was a black chef and they were talking about fried chicken and so i think they're making fried chicken in the episode and he was like his friend was like you'll never catch me eating fried chicken on tv mm. Because like, he doesn't want to be associated with it as a as a black chef, and he, it, it's David Chang was like kind of confused by this, so he goes and like talks to an African American history, an African American studies professor mm. about like the association between fried chicken and African Americans, and like why it's so insidious, mm. even though like it's they go there's a really interesting discussion of like stereotypes versus heritage, and like. Because it's true to an extent that, like, there's a heritage of eating fried chicken as, like, African Americans, but it's not, like, it's just, it's a very interesting episode. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a bad job if I try and, like, talk about it more, I feel like. Hmm. But just trust me when I say it's a very interesting discussion they have about where those kind of lines get blurred between, like, talking about heritage accurately and and owning your Mm -hmm. heritage and playing into stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Which is like, and it's not something I ever thought would arise from a food show. Yeah. And it's just kind of because like, it felt like it was something David Chang had on his mind and they just kind of like went down that thread, you know? Yeah. That's kind of how the whole show feels. It's like, they mention like, well, why don't we do it? Why why don't we like go to Naples and see what it's like? And then like the next shot is I'm going to Naples. That's (laughs) cool. Yeah. It's really, really cool. I enjoy it a lot. Do you feel like David Chang was given a lot of creative license then on the show? Is it like his show? Yeah, I think so. Uh... Yeah, it's pretty much his show, but there are, like, whole segments that he's, like, not involved in, too. And it's, like, his and this uh, guy named Peter Meehan, who's, like, a close friend of his and a food writer. Um, And he... Yeah, they, like, both kind of have segments that they do together sometimes, and sometimes they do them separately. Uh, But I would say, yeah, they're, like, the main two kind of creative uh, thrusts come from them <laughs> creative people on the show uh, too late we can't yeah, unhear no, I got creative it. thrusts I lost it <laughs> we lost our creative t- 
trust forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good, though. Okay. I enjoy it Those very sound, much. Those like, really entertaining. I love food shows. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to watch Ugly Delicious. Probably. Worth it's a lot quicker. Too. They're, like, 10 or 15-minute episodes if you just, like, want something quick and entertaining to watch. And it's not as, like... Their discussions of food aren't as sophisticated because they're not, like, a real food people mm. there's like people that like food if that makes sense mm-hmm. um whereas like ugly delicious the episodes are like 45 minutes to an hour long and they talk to like michelin star chefs in it right Oof. which is cool cool Highly speaking recommend. speaking of michelin star chefs do you guys ever watch the chef's table is it a chef's that's table that's the one i think that i saw it's chef's table chef's there's table. no article i think I think oh. that's the one that that I saw. What's his face? Is on. he on that? I think he has an, have an episode? episode. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I watched I the first one. I love Chef's Table. It is. It's really fun. It's so good. Something I don't know. It was one of those shows. Um. I have a comment. Good obsession. Oh. Yeah. Thanks. No, great job, Ben. My comments unrelated, so you did the right thing, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> great job, Aaron. For great job, Aaron. Great job, Ben. Her. <laughs> I was just thinking about nicknames. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I was thinking about Peter Nehan. Is that the name you said? Meehan. Meehan. And I was wondering if anybody ever called him PP Mimi. Because I. I <laughs> <laughs> that is just a question. David Chang does not have a Chef's Table episode. Huh? But David Chang does not have a oh, Chef's well, Table I'll have episode. I'll to figure out where I saw him then. I'm sure I can. I'm sure he's been on a myriad of cooking shows. I do think it was on Netflix, though, so I think I can probably turn it up. So, I'll find out. But, uh, anyway. Pee-pee Mimi. I was thinking about Pee-pee Mimi, and then I was thinking <laughs> that about how um, I've had, like, several people in the last week ask me uh, if they can call me if they can call me Hannah Banana. And I was then I was thinking about, like, what... No, you said no, No, right? I said Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Just, like, random people? <laughs> people I work with. God, I would hate that as a nickname at an office. Oh, I love it. Well, your <laughs> name is nothing like Hannah Banana, yeah. so that would be That's odd. That's true. I, I, yeah, it would be, yeah, don't let people call you Hannah Banana. <laughs> but I, like, I've always hated Hannah Montana. I've always loved Hannah Banana. And I was sitting here thinking about wondering what kind of person named Hannah would really get mad about someone calling them Hannah Banana me apparently <laughs> a person not named hannah would be mad about me I mean, if even if i was named hannah i would hate that i i worked in an office with an engineer at this current place but he's gone now named aaron a-a-r-o-n mm-hmm. and some of the senior leadership started calling me erin which oh. i really hated and i eventually had to tell my boss like by the way i was just like it's just aaron you can call me aaron brown Aaron but B. did we talk about this already? No. No. Or like, you can call me Ern Burn. Yeah. That's fine. Or Aaron Brown or Aaron or use context. And he was like, oh, cool. Okay. But the, the CEO still sometimes calls me Erin. And, and that's why I'm leaving. They, is, oh, that, is that how anyone pronounces that? No. No. It was, it was just, just like to distinct right? it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so... What? Right. Why does he get the name? Yeah. Well, they they call him A.A. Ron. I like and that. And I just feel like if my well, name... Well, if they're already I would doing that, that, just call you Aaron. Exactly. It was... <laughs> completely pointless and i was like just don't call me but then there, there was some there was somebody i told not to call me erin and he continued to and then one day he asked me what my middle name was and i was like i'm not gonna tell you because i don't trust yeah. that you wouldn't call me that yeah yeah like you just like i said that i was like you don't get to know that <laughs> that's awesome you're gonna have to look at my public records <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you really want to find out, I'm sure you can, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm, I will certainly not be the one to <laughs> enable that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a friend named Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, and people do call him Double A-Ron, or A-A-Ron. I just hate that. I See, I don't think he minds it. I've never heard that he, he minds it, but yeah, I've always liked he, that, but I hate Erin. It sounds terrible. It's not my fucking it's name. Not your name. Yeah. Can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. No. So the words... Ask me. Don't ask Aaron. Yeah, don't ask me, Ben. (laughs) The words fairy, like, 
the little pixies, F A I R Y, and the word fairy like a boat, do you say them differently? There's no such thing as fairies, Ben. Yeah, Ben. Okay, no irrelevant thing. to what I am saying. <laughs> yes, I do. Really, I don't fairy. at all. I think one should, but I don't. Well, think I, I do. mean, that's the other thing, though. Lots of fairy. people you... that I've come across pronounce E R I N and A A R O N differently too. Yeah. So couldn't they just call you? you I don't think down here they don't. I knew a New Yorker who called me Erin. So just you did? Did you ever give that as an option? I mean, nobody would be. No. Was that different? Yeah. Well, like because up here, people I I don't. But there. But like when I bring that up, people are like, yeah, they're different. Like I knew a girl in high school whose name was Carrie, and if you called her Carrie, she got mad. Carrie. Yeah. It's. That's such a Aaron hard and vowel Aaron. sound to Aaron. make and Aaron. differentiate. Aaron and Aaron. And, Aaron. and some yeah. people are like <laughs> adamant that it's totally distinctive. Like if I say my cousin Aaron, they assume I'm talking about a, a male person. Right. I often, like when I give my name at a restaurant or something, they'll like put it as AA Ron. Like one time, like I ordered a biscuit and gave my name as Aaron and then gave them my card, which had my fucking name <laughs> on it. And then the biscuit guy, like, kind of whipped around the corner with his head down. He was like, hey, hey, Ron. And then he looked up and he saw me and he was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> like, you're, you are not A.A. Ron. But then I've also met people who don't know that A.A.R.O.N. is the man version and E.R.I.N. is the lady version. Like, some people, like, I've met people who, like, don't really? know that those are, like, gender. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, Jesse, I, d- I never knew, had like a male and a female spelling. Oh. I feel like that's not as hard and fast, though. I agree. J E S S E? Is that that's that's male? male? No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I've heard of <laughs> females spelling it that way also. Yeah. Females. This is the second time you each have said. Referred to women as females. And that's just so funny because it's just like such a like a smarmy dude will be like, <laughs> like, you're a nice looking female or whatever. You know, like that word is just so gross. You know, <laughs> honestly, why I say Jeez. it more often than women is because the word women bothers me. You're also because saying it fact, weird. Women. <laughs> well, that's how you fucking say it. Women. This is what I hate. This is what I hate about it. Women. Is that women. the the letter that changes is not the the syllable that changes when you say between woman and women. Woman. Women. You're just saying it fast. Woman. Women. No. Woman. Like, you say the last syllable the same in both. Like it should be woman and woman. Yeah. But that's w- not what women, people say. Women. women. Oh, I see. They say the first syllable differently. So you have a to fundamental them. issue with the English language on this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got beef with English. I see. I see. So I got you're going to say I got female. beef with women. It's funny that you have that connotation, though, because I don't, I don't feel like I have that connotation at all, personally. What connotation? That female sounds smarmy. Oh, I don't really either. I'm talking about I think it ca- But I, I think- can see it. I think it can. I can send you some examples. I think some. I think I've seen some internet examples of some like, you know, smarmy dudes referring to women as females. Like I just like don't like it. I don't like it. I like it more than I like being referred to as a girl. Yeah. Especially in a work context. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I still don't. I'm still not. Hang on a second. Are you okay? Yeah. You're setting your is the podcast candle spreading fire in your podcast room. No. <laughs> what happened i just dropped a thing and it had the potential to get all over my carpet but it didn't was it some putty yes <laughs> we know you fucking caught you <laughs> you got me i wanted to say one more thing okay. that i forgot to say in up front which is that i did end up watching tignataro special and it was exactly like the uh, the live show I saw. Can we do a spoiler? Can we just say spoilers right now? Yeah, spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. For go spoiler watch it. Alert. If you haven't watched it. It's been like two. Go weeks. watch it. You can pause. Just like fast forward like one minute. Okay. In our live show, that whole you just had to be there. That whole like Indigo Girls, 
That was ramp up. Amazing. That to be there in person was so like it was just like such a visceral like you thought the Indigo Girls were coming out. Like it was just like such a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Like you were like, oh my god, oh my fucking god, the Indigo Girls are here, and f- we were in the front row. Yeah. I love the Indigo Girls. That would have been amazing. Like to like for them to like be there on stage, like right in front of you. Just like imagine that. Just like put yourself in your mind's eye. Like sit in the front row, and like a band that you love, like in this like really amazing like gay parade. Like it's just like we're gonna be there. I had no idea. And then, and then it's like this. It goes on, and then you kind of believe that it's not happening, and then. Then you believe that it is again, and then she kind of shames you for believing yeah, that it is. Yeah, makes you feel bad. And then, but it's just like watching it was really fun, but also remembering like the actual. It's just like your heart was on a a tightrope. Like you were like, but are they here? Yeah. Like, I think they are, but I don't know. I don't know and then they weren't, and then it was just like it was over. <laughs> I was walking out of the venue just like looking over my shoulder like just like they're gonna come out over there, over there, over there, over there, the I think time. it's cause it's like it's such a violation of like trust with your audience kind of that yes. it's like yeah. it's like yes it's crazy that you still believe her after the fifth time but like but you do, who would do- nobody would do that why would anybody do that <laughs> and the way she kind of went to announcer mode yeah. like you're so conditioned and also in the live special she kind of went off on the side where you could see her yeah. she fucking left <laughs> she like walked out and it was like a long time and we were like applauding <laughs> with conviction and then it kind of waned and then you were just like you felt dumb but then you felt hopeful but then you felt ashamed it was just like it was really it was really real i was wondering i was wondering if uh yeah so so that was probably the only show she ever did where the indigo girls were actually there and i feel like the bit didn't suffer at all no the fact that they came out of the end no maybe it was better i was i was was blown away (laughs) Because she, she acted surprised when it actually did, which was great. And then she sat at the drums and looked delighted. <laughs> yeah. that was, she just, like, like a kid, just delighted, and that was delightful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She did look so excited. Yeah. Well, it was so cute. It was precious. I'm glad you watched it. It was, yeah. And I'm glad you also saw it live, almost in its entirety. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, shall we do homework? Give homework? Yes. Give yeah. Give mm-hmm. homework to do? Okay. Yeah. Ella Enchanted. You can get it on Audible as an audio book. You can get it at your local Barnes & Noble or, or you know, small bookseller, um, potentially. <laughs> I feel like you had an air quote happening with your little claw hand <laughs> over there. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I, I couldn't find it at my local. I looked there first, so that's... Okay. That, if there were local. quotes, they were <laughs> some, they were like subconscious they resentment were quotes. Bitter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, check out your local. It's a really quick read. It's really very worthwhile. Um, it's you know, it's like a preteen book, but it's very good and it's still very great. Um, and then if you want <laughs> to also then feel like a really mad and betrayed, then watch the movie after that. Um, that's it. Also, somebody make it a fucking miniseries, please. I get a miniseries. Yeah. It'd be great. Anyway. And the Giants were great, too. I forgot to mention them. <laughs> Aaron, what's your homework? What <laughs> is your Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> That's the signal that you're done with your homework. <laughs> Why do you think there was a pregnant pause? It wasn't because I didn't know I was next. <laughs> Anthropo- anthropology, like Anthropo- anthropology, got it. <laughs> like the study of people <laughs> with an H at the beginning of it. Aaron, what's your do, homework? Do you have another <laughs> podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I do have another podcast. It's called So Dreamy. We talk, we listen to dreams, and we talk about them. Or sometimes, also, we watch movies about dreams, and we talk about those movies. Spoilers. 
Uh, this is a spoiler for like a month from now. Your, your guys' recording schedule and release schedule are like. <laughs> Uh, they're not aligned anyway, yeah they're not aligned okay <laughs> my homework is to grill okay here's here's what i'll say i wanted to save this for the homework part if you listen to my impassioned grilling segment and thought to yourself huh hmm, i've always wanted to grill but boy i don't know where to start and charcoal seems hard so maybe i'll just buy a gas grill well i'll say to you if you want to buy a gas grill, I guess that's okay. But really, for me, the joy of grilling really comes in the form of just, like, the whole charcoal experience. So I would say to you, buy a Weber grill. They're affordable, and they'll last you so long, so many years. Like, you just don't have to buy an expensive one. They come in beautiful colors. The blue one it brings me a lot of joy. Buy a charcoal chimney, and then get some charcoal that is not self-light. Do not buy that one, but just get some regular charcoal Watch a YouTube video about how to use a charcoal chimney. You'll be astounded at how easy it is. It's just so easy, straightforward, consistent, beautiful. The second piece of advice I would give to you is my number one grilling tool is not a spatula. It's not a pair of tongs. It is my meat thermometer. So if you're a person who wants to grill meat, then get yourself a meat thermometer. It is... A, a brand I love is Thermopop. They come in beautiful colors. I have a blue one. We're sensing a theme. <laughs> um, I absolutely rely on it, and it gives me a lot of confidence and um, has really improved my timing and technique, etc. So, and health. You know, it's a great summer to start a grill if you're able or interested. Yeah. Um. That's all. My Twitter's at Earn Burn. I review lesbian movies at Lesbian Movie Reviews on, on Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> I have no other podcasts. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know. Ben. My homework is to watch Worth It on YouTube and to watch Ugly Delicious on Netflix. And my Twitter is at any disco Greg. Oh, Kylie's Kylie just got a pixel also. She got a pixel too. Well, we went to Verizon to get my new phone, and I also got a Pixel 2. And the Pixel sometimes does this thing where it takes photos and turns them into really cute animations. Mm. Oh. Like a f- series of photos. And hers made this really cute series where Como jumped up on my lap and nuzzled my face. Oh. I posted that on Twitter. Oh. And it's cute. Oh. He's been so cuddly since we got oh, back. Oh, yeah. I think he actually like missed us yeah, a lot. Yeah, I think so. He's definitely different when you guys are, when, like, when you're in your own home and you're with him. Yeah. yeah. I think since we're hitting our almost two-hour mark, we should maybe reveal why we've been yakking at each other for so long. <laughs> we should reveal our secret that we kept a secret last week. <laughs> our best-kept secret ever. <laughs> that we didn't keep very well, because we alluded to it constantly. Shout out to Rachel <laughs> said that if I hadn't told her, she wouldn't have known. Oh, okay. But I don't know how she could know that for sure. Well, the truth is, listeners, the last week's episode was actually recorded the day after the week before's episode. <laughs> episode 36 was recorded on a Tuesday. Day. And episode 37 was recorded on the very next day, which was a Wednesday. So not and a I week I wasn't in Disney. We, we lied. lied. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You got <laughs> A week of news had not passed. A current event had not occurred. <laughs> so this is what I meant so when I said we, we could do the same th- sort of things that Disney does. Yeah. It's an illusion. <laughs> so we haven't talked to each other in two weeks. Yeah. So. Sorry. So. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for listening. I will trim this down so it won't be quite this long. But um, the podcast- I don't. I can't imagine a moment that you would want to cut out. <laughs> it's gonna be a challenge. The pod- maybe your pregnant pauses when you assumed that your homework was over <laughs> behind in your Twitter. <laughs> yeah, the podcast candle <laughs> is now extinguished. Extinguished. I'm Hannah. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.